Are you looking to supercharge your editing and color grading and speed up your workflow? Because in today's episode, we're talking about the Stream Deck XL. Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. My name is Richard, I'm a Los Angeles-based editor and colorist. And on today's episode, we're talking about the Stream Deck XL. In many ways, as editors, colors, and post-production professionals, we know our keyboards. We rely on this thing and we work with it on a very regular basis. And it is something I know inside and out. But what the Stream Deck allows us to do is set up macros, set up, set up actions, and do things that the keyboard simply can't. So you may be wondering, why do colors and editors need it? Well, specifically, it has improved my workflow and gave me the ability to get tasks done in a very timely manner. I've set this thing and I've configured it to do things that have ultimately made my life easier. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve. You can see that I have the program loaded and you can see on the left side of my screen here, I have my Stream Deck configure panel up to show you what is going on. So what the Stream Deck allows me to do is it allows me to quickly navigate and do functions in Resolve that would normally take me a couple of steps. For instance, if I wanted to build out a giant node tree, I'd have to not only create the nodes, but also then label it. But if I navigate to the color profile within Resolve, and I go to grading and I go to fixed memory trees, by hitting one button like that, you can see that it is quickly adding 18 nodes without me doing anything. I'm just sitting here, I'm talking with you, and it is building out the node trees. And normally I'd have to go through and do this by hand, label everything, but it is all right here, which is fantastic. And yes, you can set this up as a power grade to make your life easier if necessary. But I love the functionality of just it almost being like an action in Photoshop. So the other thing that I love about Resolve is having the ability to have multiple playheads. And the Stream Deck ultimately makes it really easy to navigate those without the need of remembering the shortcut. So say I wanna cycle through gondola shots really quickly without remembering multiple shortcuts. Well, now I can just hit a couple of buttons and cycle through three different shots. Here is C, there's B, and then there's A. So now I can quickly start punching through these things and start to determine, okay, is the color going in the right space or in the right place right now? And maybe that shot is a little too blue, but now I can quickly jump through these things and see them at a very quick way. And maybe I wanna add one more in here with comparing that. Well, now I have that. So now I can go A, B, C, and D. Just like that, super easy to navigate between different shots. The other thing that I love about the Stream Deck is the ability to use printer lights. Now, I know printer lights fairly well. It's something that I use on a regular basis. But even for me, it is hard to remember the shortcuts, especially when trying to add magenta or cyan or yellow. They're in a different place of the numeric keys and even I forget. But the Stream Deck streamlines that for me. I can see it visually and I can easily add things by either a quarter point, a half a point, or a full point. It's just as easy as going to like say full printer lights and maybe this is too yellow and I want to back it off a little bit. You can see that just by hitting one button, let's go back there, that's how we kind of have it now. Just by hitting one button, I'm going to go back to my printer lights, hotkeys, and go down to a half printer light and just pull it down by half a point of yellow. And maybe I will go back one more and bring it down by a quarter point of yellow. You can see that we now have it in a better spot just by hitting that one button. Another quick thing that I wanna share about the Stream Deck that I fall in love with is the ability to easily wipe a shot to really match it against something and make comparisons really easily. So say we're working on this shot here of Mount Blanc, but we want to compare it against the young Frau Young in Switzerland. We want to make sure that the colors are right and we want to make sure that the overall exposure is moving in the right direction. Well, what I can do is I can quickly just come here. I can go down to my wipes. I can show that wipe. And the other thing that I can do now is I can easily invert the wipe. So if there's something specific of the shot that I want to look at, I can now focus in on that particular part of the image. And 
again, if I move my reference sizing, like right there and slide that over, I can then continue to get a better idea of where the shot is actually at and the things that I need to be doing. Just by doing something as simple as that and using my reference swipe, I can quickly get my shot into the right place. And I'm able to do that all from the stream deck right here. It's super easy. And this is only the tip of the iceberg of what you can use the stream deck for. It was originally designed for streaming and it can do so much more than that. And that's the part that blows me away is it is a tool that even impacts us as post-production professionals because it gives us the ability to quickly make changes and keep our work moving in the right direction. If you have a Stream Deck and you've found ways to use it in ways that I'm not talking about them here, put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear or learn something new about how I could be better using this tool in my own post-production workflow. But that's all we got for this episode of the vlog. Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, hit subscribe. It would mean the world to me. But as always, create, share, and sustain the life that you want. Get out there and make some awesome work. Thanks, guys.